Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And of course, if you read further, it begins to mention, Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed, and cursed, and cursed. He said, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Verse 13. For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we, you and I, might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. And lastly, Proverbs 28, 26. I'm sorry, Proverbs 26 and verse 2. Proverbs 26 and verse 2. It says, like a fleeting sparrow. Fleeting means to just be moving from here to there, never finding rest, never landing. Like a fleeting sparrow, like a, fl like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. To keep flying until it goes back to where it's coming from. Somebody say amen. Like a fleeting swallow and a flying sparrow, so a curse without a reason that is not deserved, it will not land. Somebody say it will not land in Jesus' name. So today I'll be talking about what I've titled Redeemed from the curse. So I'm looking at the concept of curses, curses, because we are talking about the blessed life and it's important that we understand that too. It will be incomplete to talk about blessings and not look at curses because they are opposites. They are opposites. Some people deny the existence of curses but only acknowledge blessings and we like to hear blessings but curses also exist. Uh, that is like saying I believe in hot but I don't believe in cold. No, they are opposites. The fact that one exists is a proof or an attestation to the existence or the reality of the other one. So there are curses or there are blessings, but there are also curses. Now, I do not intend to focus on curses uh, to the point of building a doctrine around them or, getting, or creating fear in you. Uh, but it is important that you understand what they are and how they operate in order for you to understand what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary so that you can appropriate them. So I'm not doing this to build a doctrine. Uh, you know, it's also possible to preach so much about curses and everybody is living short like this and feeling like, oh my God, I'm, I'm under a curse. And they want to come and meet pastor to pray for them. Uh, there will be a little understanding of that. Uh, and I don't want to, uh, I'm doing it so that you have an understanding of what they are. But more importantly, to also know what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary so that you can appropriate them in your life. Somebody say amen. I want you to live wisely uh, because our adversary, the devil, is very crafty, is very deceptive, and is very wicked. The Bible says uh, the, uh, the, 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 your adversary goes, uh, no, no, no. It says, I do not want you to be ignorant of the wiles. Wiles means tricks. It means uh, cunningness. The devil is cunning. He doesn't come the way you expect him to come. If the devil came with a black cape and a, 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 a long horns and a fork or trident in his hands, many of us will run away from the devil. But the devil sometimes comes in hips, lips, and fingertips. Uh, the devil comes in stacks of money. Uh, the devil comes nicely packaged. The devil comes like that. So the Bible says that I do not want you to be ignorant of the wiles of the devil. So you need wisdom to outmaneuver the devil. God said about David that he will not allow the son of wickedness to exact him, to exact upon him, or to outsmart him or to outwit him. So it need, you need wisdom to outwit or to outsmart the devil. And that's the wisdom I am trusting will go forth as we look into the word of God today. Somebody say, I hear you. Now the forces, listen, the forces that shape people's lives and world events are both visible and invisible. The forces that change, uh, that shape events or history 
are both visible and invisible. So if you turn on the news right now, you will notice that there is crisis in Afghanistan. But I want you to know that there is a story behind the story. If you hear there is a storm, you can see the waters are overflowing their banks and taking over territories and land masses. Uh, but I want you to know there is a story behind the story. In fact, talking about that, when Jesus Christ was in the boat, the Bible says that uh, water was entering the boat and the boat was about to capsize. You know what Jesus Christ did? The Bible says he rebuked the wind. It was the unseen, but that was what was responsible for what was seen. And then he spoke to the waters. He rebuked the unseen before he spoke to the sin. So I want you to know that what shapes our world are both visible and invisible. And if you focus too much on the visible or just be carried away by the things you are hearing on the news or that you read on social media, You'll be missing a lot. You'll be missing the point. And very soon in life, you'll find out that you are confronted with situations that you don't understand. That you are confronted with situations you can't control. Why? Because you have failed to understand that behind certain things are spiritual powers controlling them. That there are spiritual powers controlling them. If you focus on the physical, you will miss the whole story. You will miss the whole story. Paul teaches us the reality of these two uh, real, very real, but different forces. They are very real. He said in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 17 and 18. But if they can put 18, they'll be very happy. Okay, 18 is there. He says, while we do not look, it's talking about troubles, affliction. Then he said, while we do not look at the things which are seen. Paul was saying that things are happening around me, but I don't want to focus on the affliction happening around me right now but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary somebody say temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal the things which are not seen they are abiding the things which are seen are passing they are fleeting they are temporary they are ephemeral but the things which are not seen they abide they remain and they have great impact on the things which are sin. I want you to follow me today. I want you to follow me today. In other words, the forces that shape people's destinies, either for good or for bad, they ultimately reside in the invisible realm. The forces that shape people's destinies, either for good or for bad, they ultimately reside in the invisible realm. Now, blessings and curses proceed from the spiritual realm and they bear tangible supernatural power. Blessings. And curses, they proceed from the invisible realm, from the supernatural realm. And they have tangible, tangible power in the physical. Always rem remember that. Blessings will produce good and beneficial results. And curses will produce bad and harmful results. Blessings will produce good and beneficial results. And curses will produce bad and harmful results results. So when a blessing is spoken, you expect to see good things uh, manifest and a curse will produce bad things. Like I said, from I've said it for like two weeks now. Uh, so like blessings, curses also have familial consequences. Family. Uh, they have family consequences, uh, uh, tribal consequences, geographical consequences. Uh, they have individual consequences. Uh, they have even vocational consequences. Uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, and when I say vocational, that means professions. Now, you may not understand it, but there are certain businesses, certain professions, certain things you can't do or you can't rise to a certain level in until you swear to certain things. Uh, I pray that you don't see some of those things, but they exist. But they exist. But they exist. There was a time Paul went to Ephesus to preach and the people who made statues there, they gathered together and they said, if we allow this man to keep preaching, business will go down. Why? Because what he was doing in the realm of the spirit was affecting their business. They knew that. They knew that. So they chanted, great is Ephes Diana of the Ephesians. The Bible says they did it for two hours. They were chanting until they drove Paul out of that city. So I want you to know that curses have such powers. And I also want you to know that curses and blessings, they transcend generations. They have the power to go on and on and on and on. Like we've seen the blessing of the nation of Israel and on and on. They go endlessly. In fact, there's a place God says to the 10th generation. And so until something is done or something happens, 
they can continue like that. The Bible talks about uh, when Jericho was conquered, uh, jo jo Joshua, yeah, was it Joshua? Gideon, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua said, after they brought down the walls of Jericho, he said, anybody who attempts to build this nation again, he said, he will lay the foundation with his first son and he will put the gates with his last son. And several years later, one man saw, wow, this is a nice parcel of land, not knowing anything that like, had been said. And he went there and he began to lay this foundation. Not too long after he started a um, groundbreaking ceremony, his first son died. And when they were about to do the naming ceremony, if that's what they do for houses, well, housewarming, uh, the second son died. And, and you know, that curse, at that point, it was broken. It never continued. And that's why we still hear about Jericho in the New Testament. But that man paid for it until something happens. They can go on and on. Are you following me today? Are you following me today? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, the main vehicle of both blessings and curses is words. That's the main vehicle, words. The vehicle, the vehicle, the vehicle. And I like to say that words are vehicles of power. They carry power. They carry power. So word, words is the main vehicle of both blessings and curses. Curses can be defined as the use of powerful words. Listen, the use of powerful words to invoke supernatural harm. To invoke supernatural harm using words. Such words may be spoken. They may be written, and I've, you've also seen some people, they write, they wash it somewhere and get somebody to drink them. Even in the Old Testament, if a woman has uh, uh, cheated on her husband, I don't know why it was the women, and uh, they wanted to be sure, they took them to the priest, and the priest will write the sin and wash. You remember that? They wash the water and make her drink it. And if she has actually committed that sin, just by drinking that water from something that was written, things begin to break out in her body. So they can be written, they can be spoken. Words are primarily the vehicle, but they can also be written. And sometimes it can be said in the heart. Not often, but it can be said in the heart. We call them ill wishes. Soulish prayers can be said in the heart. Words. You look at some scriptures in Proverbs, and I like them. Look at what Proverbs says. Okay, let me run a little faster. Proverbs says that the hypocrite, or hypocrite, the hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor but through knowledge and i'll talk about that next week through knowledge the righteous will be delivered the hypocrite with his mouth so a mouth can destroy somebody can use your mouth to bring destruction to kill everything next one proverbs 12 18 there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword there is a particular person it may not be everybody but there are certain ones that when they speak it's as if swords have choked Chooked you. There's a Nigerian English like that. They say choking. They say with swords have choked you. Okay. And the next one. Death. This is popular. And life are in the power of the tongue. Death is in the tongue. Death is in the tongue. But life is also there. It says, but those who understand it will reap the benefits thereof. And I like what James says. In fact, everybody should go and read the book of James chapter 3 about the power of the tongue. Now it says here, it says, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. It says, with it we bless our God and Father. And with it we curse men who have been made in the image or similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. So it was saying as believers, that shouldn't be us. But I wanted to see there that out of the same mouth, blessing can come out. And curses can come out. Blessing can come out. And curses can come out. I say curses are powerful words intended to bring supernatural harm. Has it ever occurred to you that when Goliath was going to fight with David, he said, I curse you with the name of my gods. <laughs> he had swords. He had spears. He had javelin. He even had an armor bearer. He was bigger in size. But he knew that the battle was not only physical. He knew that. He knew that. And he expected, and when they did that in those days, and in those medieval days, they get an, uh, a shaman or witch or wizard or sorcerer, and they first cast a spell. It was supposed to disarm, to weaken, to discomfit, to put fear in the heart of their enemies so that the battle can easily be won. So he knew what he was doing. Uh, but David also understood that the battle is not just physical. He said, you may have come against me with swords and spears, but I come against you in the name of the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defied. He said, this day, I will bring your head down. 
Because I always say life is a battle of words. If you are a Yoruba man, you will understand that. In those days, you will see those two uh, warriors and they will be making enchantments. They have swords and bows and arrows, but they will not meet each other. They are standing afar from each other and they will begin to talk. One will say, I'm an Iroko tree. Anybody who tries to shake the Iroko tree is only shaking himself. The other one will say, ah, I am like fire. He said, anything that com fire confronts, fire burns it down. The other one says, I am water. Water will always go over fire. The other one says, I'm a white pit. Whenever water gets there, it swallows it. And they keep going like that until one doesn't know what to say again. And then he begins to go weak and weak and then he's disarmed. It's a battle of words. Bishop Oedek will say, a silent mouth or a closed mouth is a closed destiny. You can't just close your mouth because it is a battle of words. Have you ever wondered why Balak hired Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel? If you go to Second uh, Numbers chapter 22 and verse 6 there, he said, go and hire him. He said, people have come to me. He says, they are great. They are filling the land. I don't know what to do about them. We want to confront them and fight them. But before we do that, please come and curse them for me. Because he also understood that if he will curse, and the Bible says about him that in those days when he spoke, Balaam, it was as if the gods have spoken. It was the man who opened his eyes but saw revelation. But that day, uh, it did not work. Somebody say, could it work? So a curse is not just a mere wish. Uh, it, just as a blessing isn't a mere wish, they are not just mere wishes. It possesses inherent power to fulfill itself. It possesses inherent power to fulfill itself. Sometimes you don't need to even do anything. And just like a blessing sometimes, it has power in it to fulfill itself. Curses or blessings are words from the heart directed to supernatural beings who have power to do good or curse harm. They are words from the heart directed to supernatural beings who have the capacity to do good or to cause harm. The use of magic and enchantments uh, in those days, uh, some still do. Why do you think Babalawos are still in business and all of those? It's because they believe that what we are doing, somebody that we don't see has the capacity to make it happen. Are you, are you listening to me, church? They say that what we are doing, that's why they still go. That's why people still take their name and say, curse it. Because they believe when I say it, there are beings, unseen beings. That Amplified Bible calls them master spirits. The message Bible. Master spirits, beings without bodies that will make those things come to pass. And also, there are beings, good beings. That can also make things come to pass. In Psalm 103 verse 20, the Bible says, Bless the Lord who is angels who excel in strength. He said, who hearken to the voice of his word. So when you also give the, vo the word of God a voice, you also commission angels to walk. Now, it's not that every time when somebody speaks over you a curse, they have the authority to do it. Listen to me. It's not that every time somebody pronounces a curse over you, they have the authority or the power to do it. Because as you look through the Bible, it's actually God that has the ultimate power to pronounce a curse or to allow a curse to land. And that's why you can confidently say that a curse without a curse shall not lie. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10, it says, take counsel together, speak a word, say, but it shall not stand. So are you following me? I've forgotten my thought right now. What was I talking about? Can somebody help me? Before I went to that. Okay, so yeah, I remember. So a curse, it, it, it doesn't mean that uh, somebody who has authority or anybody can speak, even when they don't have the authority, can just speak over you. But this is what I want you to understand. When negative words are spoken, whether the person has authority or not, there are apprentice demons, free roaming demons, who have nothing to do, who are just idle. We'll hear those things and carry them to work with them. So that's why you must not take them lightly, no matter who is saying them. You must not take them lightly. Because even if the person does not have the spiritual clout to, to say that over you, but there are demons who just take negative words and work with them. Just like there are angels who take words that emanate from the, from the scripture uh, and fulfill them. So what are the roots or what is the root of curses? Uh, the first root of curses is seen in the book of Genesis where man pronounced a curse upon man that has sinned. Uh, upon man that has sinned. So that's the root of every curse. If Adam and Eve are representing all of us, all of us had not eaten the fruit they ate, there will not be anything like a curse. And so that's the root of all curses. Man's fall in the garden. Man's fall in the garden. And the second primary root is 
the law. The law. The law of Moses. If you don't fully follow everything, and nobody can fully follow everything. And that's why we read in Galatians chapter 3, say, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in the, in the law. Who does not continue because it is difficult. He said, for as many, first of all, as are of the works of the law are under a curse. So that dispensation in itself brought a curse. Because when Moses gave it, it pronounced blessings and pronounced curses on Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim or something like that uh, in the Bible. So it came with a curse. So he said, uh, that system brought a curse. And then he said, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law. Why? Because nobody can keep everything. And that also means, going back to Jeremiah 17 last week, that if you try to do it by yourself, because that's what the works of the law require. Your effort, your effort, your effort. He would depart from God, who leans solely on the arm of flesh, has brought himself under the dispensation of the law of Moses. He says, a curse comes. Do you understand me? Thank you very much. Now we go to secondary causes. Let me put them up there. Secondary causes of, of, uh, secondary causes of curses. Sin. Sin. You don't want to miss next week uh, because I'll tell us certain things we need to understand and do. So the first one is sin. When you put your hands in iniquity, the Bible says sin pays wages and it is death. In James, it says when a man is tempted, let him not say he's tempted by God. He said, because God cannot tempt any man. He says, but every man is tempted by his own desire. And when desire conceives, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully mature, it gives birth to death. The second, secondary curse, a cause of curses is by inheritance, hereditary. It flows in the DNA. It's coming from the family line. And you also see certain patterns in certain families. Just run through them. Continue. Negative decrees. When the incantations, hexes spells, voodoos and jujus and doodoos. They begin to do all of those things. Negative pronouncements and decrees and demonic legislations and, 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 and injunctions in the realm of the spirit. Uh, they can pronounce a curse. A secondary uh, let, no, go back there. I've not finished sir. Thank you. Disregard for parents. Disregard for parents. The Bible says he will uh, I've forgotten that scripture in Proverbs. He will dishonor his father. When I say a bird of the air will pluck his eyes. I don't know who has seen that before. Another place says that his light will be snuffed out in the prime of his youth. They would disregard their parents, would dishonor their parents, honor the, honor your father and your mother, that your life may be long upon the face of the earth, because it is a promise that comes with a blessing. Are, are you following me today? Now, violating spiritual authority. We don't talk about that a lot. And social media has made it very easy to violate spiritual authority. Talk about the pastor. Talk about every. Talk about or talk down, denigrate, castigate, slander, cast laws on them and all of that. Uh, but it is still a biblical principle because God works with authority. God works with authority. God works with authority. Always remember that there are certain things we do unwittingly and we bring ourselves under a curse. I'm not saying don't uh, say something is wrong or to just take anything, but you need to be careful what you say with your mouth. God said to them in the Old Testament, say, what? Okay, I speak to you, but do you know about Moses? He said, I speak to him not, not like people who see dreams and vision. See, I speak to him face to face like a man will speak to his friend. He said, are you not afraid to have spoken to him like that? To have spoken to him like that. And in the New Testament, it is downplayed. But you also see concepts of evil honors the prophet. will get the prophet's reward. And if you do not, you also know what that means. Or the person who lied to uh, Peter and they died right there. And Peter says, actually not evil means the Holy Spirit. So it's even worse in the New Dispensation. So it's important to understand some of those things. Uh, la, unforgiveness. Oh, I can just stay here. I, I'm serious. I can really just stay here. And you will not know and you are praying. Katapanama teke leboza, he leboze, he leboza. Ile bonde keya, unforgiveness. La lula beze ke leba, unforgiveness. The prayer is not going beyond the ceiling. And you open yourself to certain spirits. Because you can't beat the devil in the realm where he operates. Uh, if you were here when I preached on uh, uh, secrets of, no, who on earth did I marry? And I talked about Adam and Eve. You know, interesting, you may not have seen it in that marriage, in, in that couple before. But if you noticed, they fell. They ate what God said they should not eat. Remember, it was the wife that brought it to the man. And the man too ate it in direct violation of what God said to him. And then God cast them out 
pronounced curses on them and cast them out of that house. Have you ever noticed in that story that there was not once that Eve said to Adam, Honey, I'm really sorry. I, I shouldn't have done this. I made you lose everything you ever inherited, everything you ever worked for. I didn't do you well. I'm so sorry. There was not a time that Adam said, Honey, I shouldn't have allowed you to be the one who is manning the gate in the house, talking to the devil. I was not there. I, I, I am sorry. I'm sorry that uh, my rebellion to God brought all of this on us. I'm sorry. Not one of them said to God, Father, please forgive us. We are sorry. We don't know what came upon us. I didn't notice none of them did that because they didn't understand the concept of forgiveness. Check what happened in the next generation. By the next generation, just a little envy was leading to death because it will have continued in the generations. So unforgiveness is so powerful. Okay. Behave yourself, Wally. Okay. Inordinate appetites. Covetousness. You want this. You want that. I must have this. I must be there. I must that. The Bible says those who have done that, they have pierced their hearts through with many sorrows. First Timothy chapter 6, somewhere there. Go on. And uh, statues dedicated to demons. Can you put that scripture? Statues, effigies. Like a ray. I don't know how to say it else in English. You know what I mean by statues? Like, uh huh. What? I'm looking for another name. Well, images, statues. So you go to a place and buy this, this thing with two breasts, really like that, and all of that. And you put them in your house and everything, and any of those things. Now, it's not everything, but you need to be mindful. You need to be mindful. And maybe I'll say a little more about that next week. Uh, so, he said, you shall not burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is an accursed thing. There are certain things. Now, I'm not saying every work of art is uh, accursed and all of that, but there are certain things. Why? Because the inspiration that came behind them and the things that were, they were dedicated to without your knowledge they will keep speaking they will keep speaking have you ever wondered that a man goes to the forest cuts a tree and the bible says in isaiah uses a part to make mortar for pounded yam that's not what the bible says but also cuts another part and uses it as an idol and then he begins to bow his head to that same piece of wood after a while that begins to answer to him why because the moment he ascribes worship to it certain demons come around it and then it begins to do what the mortar cannot do. Tells you that there are things happening in the realm of the spirit. Are you listening to me? Okay. Ungodly, fam ungodly family rituals. It's our family thing. We do it. We pour libation. We gather iron together. And we go there and we do stuff. And, and all of that. It's a family thing. We must pour alcohol and all of Just several things. I don't know, but you know. Some of those things are just gateways. They open doors. Ungodly family rituals. Cult membership. You belong in certain cults. Uh, exposure to demonically inspired books, images, music, or videos. Or videos. Or videos. I don't have time to talk about all of this. But this, these things exist. These things exist. I remember a, a group called Limp Biscuits. There, there is there, there a rock, rock um, group, a rock group. And uh, people will say that in their concert, if when they have a concert, violence increases in the city. Just going for their concert and on your way home, people break up, they break things. Why? Because they've exposed themselves, certain spirits were released there. So you need to be careful what you expose yourself to. Uh, oaths and blood covenants in dating. Angela, you're my sugar, you're my tea. You're the mosquito in my net. I will be your own forever. And some people have done that. They just cut their hands and do blood oaths and all of those things. And some people do it in secondary school and they do it innocently. But some of those things can become gateways. They can become gateways and zodiac signs. Sagittarius, cancer. How can you also go and check cancer? And you want to know what cancer is saying. Saturn is beside Jupiter. And for that reason, you are going to be. It's a lie. It's, de it's devils. Oh. You are channeling spirits. You are opening doors to ungodly, unclean, demonic spirits. If the word of God can't tell you, cancer can't tell you. Leo can't tell you. Capricorn can't tell you. Libya or Libra, whatever, can't tell you. None of those things can tell you. Stay in the word of God. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. The Bible says in Isaiah 8.20, I believe, it says, 
if they do not speak according to this word, he said it is because there is no truth in them. Stay away from them. I beg you. Okay, let's move on. Manifestations of curses in a life. Bad luck. Just being unfortunate. Just things are just happening. You, like Jabez. Where you just go to. There's a party and Jabez enters. His leg will trip the cord of the DJ's stunt table. Music. Everybody say Jabez. Jabez. Things, unfortunate things will just be happening around the person. Okay, continue, sir. Just a second. Uh, let me get it here, too. Unfortunate things begin to happen. Sickness, mental breakdown, depression, all these things. You just be seeing, you're always falling, always falling sick. Dealing with mental break, breakdown, depression. Some people being accident prone. Just every time they go out, don't borrow them your car to go and use to work. They will come back and say, one keke na pep, one this, one that. They're just, you're just wondering. Uh, family suicidal patterns or suicide in certain family. You hear that the father, when things got tough, committed suicide. The brother, the uncle, in a family, in three generations, about five people have committed suicide. Notice things like that. Difficulty in making progress. For some people, it just a lot takes them a lot to make little progress. Invisible barriers are to healings, are praying, and it's just difficult to get healed. Uh, difficult, invisible barriers to answers to prayers to getting married to finances barrenness in life you put your hands in something it's not working out well now I've said a lot of things and you are wondering it is important to note however in everything I've said that just as not all prosperity is from God also not all troubles are punishment from God it's not everything you are going through that is a curse when as a pastor mm, I graduated school last year. I still don't have a job this year. I am under a cross. You are not under a cross. You are just in Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria. So don't just say that you are under a cross because certain things are happening. Just because, just because somebody has money and all of that doesn't mean they are blessed. And just because somebody has troubles doesn't mean they are blessed. In fact, sometimes trouble is just a part of the deal. It helps us to become better believers, better Christians. It grows us. The ba- grows us. The Bible says, after trouble has done its work, say character will be formed. In 1 Corinthians 11, 25, look at what Paul said there. He said, uh, no, that is not born the calf image. This is um, Deuteronomy in uh, first, Second Corinthians 11, 25. But what Paul was saying there, basically, he said that three times I was shipwrecked at sea. He said, once I was stoned. Several times I was flogged. He said different things were happening to me. He said I was in peril at sea. In peril of my brothers. In peril amongst the Gentiles. This guy was just going through all kinds of things. All kinds of things. So it doesn't matter. So we see in the life of Paul, it didn't mean Paul was cursed. It didn't mean he was cursed. But then that was trouble. So it's important that you understand that. How do I know when I'm cursed? I can't answer that. Aha. Uh-huh. So I don't say something. I say, uh-huh. I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I won't answer that. But as you listen, you will understand. Now, the good news is that Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Somebody say amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse. You don't have to be a victim of any curse. Jesus Christ has redeemed you. Everything I've said right now is not meant for you as a born again child of God. It's not meant for you. Uh, what the devil plays on is your ignorance. Your ignorance of who you are in Christ. Your ignorance of what Christ did on the cross and the benefits that accrue to you from what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So if you see a Christian living a a life that looks like there is a curse, it is a function of ignorance. It's a function of ignorance. Why do you think Balaam could not curse the children of Israel? It is because a lamb had been sacrificed. The blood of a lamb had been shed in Egypt. And I'm telling you, on the cross of Calvary, the lamb of God shed his blood so make enchantments, it will not work. Like I said last week, take my name to the Babalawas, it will not work. Cut the mustache of a mosquito and grind it with the hind leg of a cockroach and pour powder on it and call my name, it will not work. Because the blood has been shed. Now, Jesus Christ by his death secured our release from the bondage, from every form of bondage, and the outworking of curses in every area of our lives, the outworking of harmful patterns, the death of Jesus Christ released us from their influence 
and it is sufficient. The blood of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is sufficient in all situations. So you don't have to remain in jail. Tell yourself, I will not remain bound. Uh, the Bible says in Galatians 5.1, uh, it says, stand fast in the liberty with which Christ has made you free. And do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So you don't have to be a slave to generational curses or evil enchantments. Uh, you don't need to spend your energy as a child of God fighting curses because Christ has dealt with them. Don't go and come and break this curse. I'm going for this deliverance. I need to be set free from this. I need that. Yeah, that, that, that. I am there. Can't they, I, the devil say, I have this one. I have this one. This one, no, no, in be. I have this one. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. From the curse of the law. As you look at what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, the Bible says he suffered outside the camp. If you notice, Jesus Christ was not killing time. He was taken out of the city. It's a concept of the Old Testament. So he suffered outside so that we may be brought inside. Because the greatest curse that ever will be pronounced on man will be depart from me, uh, you Workers of iniquities. So to be brought near is a blessing of the Lord. David said, blessed is the man whom you cause to approach you. So he suffered outside the camp that we might be brought in. He wore the crown of thorns so that everything that was cursed upon the earth, uh, the works of the, uh, the, the, the produce of your business of the earth uh, will begin to yield blessing to you. His hands uh, were nailed to the cross uh, so that the works of your hands will be blessed. His knees. His feet, I'm sorry, were nailed to the cross so that you can regain your dominion. Because wherever the soles of our feet shall tread upon, we shall possess as our possession. His side was pierced so that anything that represents heartaches and, and rejection uh, and, and uh, people turning their backs on you and betrayals, that you will be healed from them. That no curse will land upon you. He hung on a tree because the Bible says cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. And every curse that was upon, that's supposed to be upon us will be put upon that tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Say, I am not cursed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Say, I am blessed. Hallelujah. He was flogged. He was beaten. So that sickness will not ravage our lives. Sickness will not have dominion over us. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. No wonder Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 says, So looking at all of this, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Look at what God has done. If you turn your back on this, and then that means you open yourself to curses because how do you escape how can you escape if you neglect all of this that he shed his blood his side was spared his hands his, his feet his head he wore the crown of thorns he hung on the cross he took your sin he made you righteousness how can you escape i don't know why some people are turning away from god or turning away from jesus christ or not living a life for jesus christ i don't understand it how can we escape if we neglect the bible calls it so great so great a salvation so great a salvation potent enough to deliver you potent enough to set you free the cross of Jesus Christ is the one-stop shop where you can get everything you need there is healing there there is deliverance there there is hope there there is restoration there there is help there there is deliverance there there is comfort there there is abundance there at the cross of Jesus Christ everything you need it is one medicine that answers to every sickness it is one answer to every question it is one solution to every problem at the cross of Jesus Christ when God took Jesus Christ to the cross he did it he did it it was the final deal no wonder Jesus Christ said it is finished nothing else needs to be done so if that doesn't work for you I do not know what will work I do not know what will work there is nothing that hell can come up with that does not find its answer and solution in the cross of Jesus Christ I like the scripture in Colossians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 if they can quickly put it up there I need to round up <laughs> Colossians chapter 2. Listen to this. He said, at the cross, Jesus wiped out every written sentence against us. And he disarmed the devil and his demons of their arsenal. That's not the scripture you have put. That is what I wrote. But it's okay. He said that, uh, uh, can somebody quickly open the okay? Can you help me? Don't worry, just stay there. It's fine. This is what I wrote. That's not the scripture. 
Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. Okay, maybe I will be faster. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? I want you to see that scripture. Colossians 2, okay, 14. Don't worry, okay, thanks. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle. That means he yeared them in public. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Triumphing over them in it. And he disarmed principalities. The Bible says, go back to that slide. It says, everything that was written, that was against us, that was contrary to us, Jesus took them out of the way took them out of the way. I don't know what has been said against you. I don't know what has been written against you. I don't know there's even a court sentence, a judgment that you need or that is against you. The Bible says he took them out of the way. Every written sentence that is against you, Jesus took it out of the way. And the Bible says he, he nailed it to the cross and then went ahead and disarmed principalities. He disarmed them. Whatever they would have used to harm you, took it away from them. Collected their weapons from them. He collected the devil's bazooka. He collected the devil's IED. He collected the devil's cut missiles. He collected everything the devil had. He removed everything he had. To disarm means to disable, to demobilize, deactivate, disband, make powerless, put out of action. Put the devil out of action. And, and, and to say to them to lay down your weapons. He disarmed principalities. How can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Jonah said in the book of Jonah, chapter 2, verse 8, he said, those who pursue worthless idols, they forsake their own mercies. Those who, those who chase after worthless things, they lose the opportunity to experience the mercy of God, the goodness of God. They lose the opportunity. I want everybody to be on their feet. We'll pray a little. We'll pray a little. We'll pray a little. We'll pray a little. I want you to begin to declare right now that I'm free from the influence of every curse. Open your mouth and begin to say that. Open your mouth. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray so you won't have to pray. Pray so that your children won't have to pray. Regebo jata ya bade gazabado. Legedo zabi kalibra natada. Regebo jata ya gabo. Mande kola brasata. Elebo zata ya baba. Ragabo jata la. I want somebody to be violent in the spirit and pray in the name of Jesus. Say, I break and revoke every curse. Every curse. Every ungodly alliance entered on my behalf or that I entered unknowingly, I break them, I revoke them, I release myself from their influences right now. In the name of Jesus, that prayer is on the screen. You can pray it for yourself. I break and revoke every curse, every ungodly alliance that I might have entered or that was entered on my behalf unknowingly. I release myself from their influences right now. In the name of Jesus, I release myself. I release my wife. I release Asha. I release Aaron. I release Aliyah. I release Nancy Charity. Regebo Shata Yedebo Mande Kola Brasata Yegadebo Zaya Bababa. Put a second prayer point there. Regebo Shanda Yababa. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I reverse the influence of negative words. Barreko Baba, myself that or others have spoken over me. I reverse the influence of negative words uh, that are spoken over myself and others have spoken over me. I declare that they are lies and they shall hold no power over my life. They are lies. They shall hold no power over my life. I speak a crop failure. I speak a crop failure. Every negative word germinating right now, growing right now. I nullify them. I cancel them. Every satanic pronouncement or decrease against my life, against my family progress or destiny. I nullify them. I cancel them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Begin to say, I declare that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law, the principle, the pattern, the system of sickness, of sin and death. In the name of Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, has made me free from the law of sin, from the law of sin, from the law of sickness, from the pattern of misfortune, from the pattern of failure. I superimpose uh, the law of the spirit of life, the spirit of life, the spirit of life, the spirit of grace, the spirit of truth 
the spirit of abundance has made me free in the name of Jesus Isaiah 8 10 says make a counsel speak a word it shall not come to pass gather a confederacy it shall not stand begin to say I scatter every alliance against my good and I shut every mouth that speaks contrary to God's plan for me it will not stand for God is with me in the name of Jesus. Regebo Shata Yabada and the Kola Brasata Regebo Shanda Kayaba Matekele Baba. Every alliance where they are ganging up, where they are meeting right now. Matekele Brasata trying to decide my fate, trying to decide my destiny. But whatever decisions they want to come up with is not favorable. Shut their mouth up. Shut their mouth up. Shut their mouth up. Every mouth speaking contrary to the will of God for my life. Shut up! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, your plan shall not stand. For God is with me. For God is with me. In the name of Jesus, right now, begin to say, I enforce the victory. This is our last prayer point. I enforce the victory of the, cur of the cross in every area of my life. Jesus won the victory at the cross. It is some principalities. It is some powers. Reggae bobo bo. He prayed go redaba. He paid for sickness. He paid for a good life. He has come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Say I enforce the victory of the cross in every area of my life. I make mine every privilege of flowing from the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I declare that I'm not a victim of Satan. Or his, and his demons are our curses. In the name of Jesus, I walk in the victory of the cross. I make it mine. What Jesus paid for, I make it mine. What Jesus died for, I make it mine. What Jesus provided, I make it mine. I'm not under a curse. I'm not under a curse. I am blessed. I won't be a victim. A regobobobo of satanic arrows shot at random. A regobobobo. I will not be on the road. The day blood is being shed. The day lives are being taken. The day of doctors are on the road. I am not a victim. Begin to declare, I am blessed. 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 Say it. Let the heavens hear it. I am blessed. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now make this declaration after me. Or let's say it together. Can, you, can everybody see it? Okay, we are making declarations right now. We don't do that kneeling down. And I appreciate that. We are speaking authoritatively. Kings don't sit down when they speak to their subjects. In the name of Jesus. Now let us go. Three, two, go. I have been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Christ died for me. Therefore, I have escaped a cursed life. I revoke every curse Satan tried to smuggle into my life through my carelessness, sin, error, or ignorance. I release myself and my family from their influences. I refuse to pay for or repeat the sins or errors of my fathers or tribal leaders. I am in Christ. So all things are passed away and all things are now new. I break away from the influence of every curse. I declare the forceful reversal of negative pronouncements and declarations over my life. Like a flying sparrow, they shall not land on me. By faith, I partake of the blessing secured by the cross. The works of my hands are blessed. My body is healthy. My mind is sound. My mind is sound, I'm sorry. And my spirit is awake. I am blessed. Too blessed to be cursed. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. In the name of Jesus. Now everybody lift your hand and say, Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He came and died for my sins. And so today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender. I submit. Have your way. Break the curse. Bring the blessing. From this day forward, I'm a child of God, a child of the promise, a child of faith, and a child of victory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name, if you believe, say amen. Say amen. 
Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you.